Say hi. Hey guys, my name is Curtis. This is my wife Chelsea, and this is Kona, who oh, really goodness. wants to play right now. <laughs> uh, this is Kona. And we got Kona about a month ago now. Looking back on what it was like getting a bangle, there's a few things that I wish we would have known. So here they are. So our first thing you need to know about bangles before you go ahead and bring your little critter home is that these are some high energy cats. We did our research beforehand. We know that everywhere on the internet will tell you that these are high energy cats. But sometimes just the words make it hard to picture or hard to really imagine. There she goes. <laughs> Imagine what it's really like and what level of energy we're talking about here. A typical Kona when she's in a playful mood is she can be sitting on the floor at one point in time and then full tilt sprint to the other side of the house and she can do this five, six, seven times in a row, no problem. It kind of comes as a shock at first and you're like, why is she running around like crazy? Like we've played with her, we've done all this, but through this, we've learned a lot of tips that help us manage her energy and get that playfulness and active parts out at the most appropriate times. Believe me, Kona can definitely outplay the both of us. I think <laughs> between the two of us, we probably spend an hour each playing with Kona every day. And some of the things that we've done to kind of break up the play times is don't try to play her out like all in the first hour. She'll play for an hour, hour straight, she'll get gassed, and then 20 minutes later, she's <laughs> ready to go again. So instead, try to stimulate her like throughout the day more often. So instead of like a full hour straight up playing, I would break it up into little 15 minute increments. Some of Kona's favorite toys are things like, <laughs> like these things. This is just like a stick with a little thing on the end. She's like right here below us. I like to play with these feathers. She goes nuts with feathers. And then once we're done playing with these, we'll usually bring out the laser pointer for about five, 10 minutes and she'll chase that around. <laughs> the other thing that we've had the ability to do is take Kona for some walks. Um, she doesn't get very far. A 10 minute walk is a lot for her, but that's another good way of stimulating her mind, letting her explore and getting that playfulness out. <laughs> we'll put all the links to all these toys and everything that we use to walk her down in the description below. So if you guys want to check them out, click the links below. If you're like us and you're a little bit taken back by the amount of energy that your bangle kitten has, don't worry. We learned that bangles are three times more energetic when they're a kitten than when they're a full grown cat. We've already seen Kona's energy levels kind of shift and change. And if she's one third as playful as what she is now, that is so manageable and we're gonna love our playtime with her. We can handle that, but right now she's <laughs> pretty insane. Kona. <laughs> I lured her in. Okay, she's okay right now. She <laughs> does get insane, I promise. Okay, so next is cat scratchers and cat climbers, like this one. So the first thing that we went out and bought was this cardboard cat scratcher. I think we got this like on Amazon for 10 bucks or something. All it is is corrugated cardboard all stuck together. She loves to scratch this. And if you don't have scratches like this, this is gonna lead to um, cats scratching up your furniture and behavioral problems and stuff. Cats really need to scratch, so I highly recommend one of these. Um, the other thing that we went and found is something for her to climb and scratch, which is this, this cat tree behind us right here. Um, we spent a lot of time, actually Chelsea spent a lot of time researching and trying to find a cat tree that wasn't the ugliest cat tree that you'll ever see, because a lot of them are ugly and we don't like to have ugly things in our home, unfortunately. But it still had a good height for Kona to climb on. It had lots of scratchers and it even has a little hole and she likes to go to sleep in there. Mm -hmm. Kona and Bangles in particular are like any other cat in that they need to scratch and they need to climb. So highly recommend one of those and one of these. Again, link in the description below. I can't believe it when we take Kona out for walks, she cannot walk by a tree without wanting to climb it. Uh -huh. So giving her healthy and safe places to do that, exactly what you need to do. However, bangles are not like regular cats in that these cats specifically really need to climb. You can see Kona up here. 
So what we did in speaking about ugly furniture, um, we didn't want to have a big, ugly cat tree. We, again, we did a lot of research and tried to find something that she could climb that we could put in our house that wasn't the ugliest thing in the world. So we DIY'd this little cat shelf and I can show you how it works. Basically, there it is. Shelves all the way up. Kona loves to climb it. We put holes on opposite, opposite sides the whole way up so that she can jump up here, come up here, jump, jump. Uh, this is still a work in progress. We got a lot to go still. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna decorate it some more and super glue some stuff down so that she can play with it as much as she wants, but it's not gonna get knocked over. Mm -hmm. um, right now we just have some little cords <laughs> for her to play with on the shelf um even when we take Kona out for walks it's crazy how she is compelled to climb every spot there's a lot of places like our kitchen cabinets and stuff like that that we don't want Kona to get in a habit of climbing so again we're trying to give her safe spaces where she's free to climb as much as she wants we're so afraid every time we take her out for a walk that she's going to get stuck up a tree so again safe places that she can get out some of her animal instincts how do you like your shelf, Kona? So the next thing we're gonna talk about is a feeding and playing schedule. So like we said earlier, these cats are full of energy, especially as kittens. So it's very important to get them on a playing and eating routine. So what we like to do for feeding time is we'll get her up at about 8.39, just before we go to work. I think it's usually about two hours after they eat that they'll start digesting and wanna have a sleep. So we'll feed her at 8.30, we'll go to work, Usually she sleeps all day. Um, we're kind of in quarantine or have been in quarantine with the COVID-19 thing for about the last two weeks. So we've been kind of locking ourselves in the office trying to get her used to us being away. And um, while we're working, she's kind of out here always sleeping. Um, and then right about three is when Chelsea would get home. We feed her again and she starts to wake up and get a little bit more playful. Um, and then usually about 6.30, 7 o'clock, we'll try to take her for a walk. Then after the walk at eight o'clock is when we'll feed her again. And then by eight o'clock, she gets a little bit hyper, um, right before bed. And then usually about 10 o'clock, two hours after she eats, she's ready to sleep. So cats kind of run on a cycle of play, eat, sleep. So it's kind of like hunt, catch, kill, eat thing. So what we like to do is play with her as much as we can before we feed her. Um, that way she's good and tired, she eats, and then she's kind of ready to... She's uh, got a full belly and she's ready to sleep it off. Creating this routine has really helped us get Kona to fall asleep at appropriate times. When we talked about her being active and her being playful, this means that there's lots of running, there's lots of playing with balls and stuff, and this all creates a lot of noise. We want her to go to sleep when we're ready to go to sleep. So by creating this routine for her, she typically falls to sleep within an hour of when we do, and we don't have to worry about her keeping us up all night long. Because she still is a kitty, she doesn't have all of her adult teeth in yet, but she is pretty good at eating solid food already so when we first got her from the breeder she was mixing in a little bit of wet food with the hard stuff and we've slowly tried to wean her off of the wet stuff and putting less and less in at each feeding time at which point we were finally at completely dry food she ate it all the first couple times but then started to eat less and less and less and for some reason i think that brought out like the crazy in the cat like the, <laughs> the, the wild. wildness in the cat and she started absolutely going nuts she wasn't behaving she was freaking out around the house. She wasn't going on walks very good anymore. Mm -hmm. um, she just wasn't responding the way she usually does. And I, I think we started to figure out that it was probably her feeding schedule and that she wasn't eating properly and she was kind of grazing all day long and just like kind of eating like a bird and going back all the time. And she would never have an empty food dish. Um, so what we went and did was went and bought some more wet food and started mixing it in and she's been eating much better and she's been much calmer and much more pleasant to be around. The other thing is we take away her food dish when she's done eating. When she walks away from her food bowl, her food bowl's gone. So she now knows that she can't graze all day long. She eats when we give her the food. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is litter box training. So thankfully when we picked Kona up, we got her from a really good breeder who knew what she was doing because the kitties were all pretty much um, litter trained before we picked her up. Um, but a little pro tip that we kind of talked about in the video when we first 
picked Kona up, which we can link here, was when you bring the kitty home for the first time, the very first thing you should do is put them right in the litter box as soon as they get in the house. And then from there, they'll kind of explore the house and the litter box will kind of be like their starting point. They'll figure out where everything else is in the house based on where the litter box is. We did this periodically throughout the day too. Every few hours or so, I'd go and drop her off in the litter box and then she'd find her way back. <laughs> Where you go, Kona? Sorry. And then she'd find her way back to us. And I think it worked because we've had zero accidents to speak of. She's done so good with litter box training. And that's probably because these cats are so smart. Okay, now finally, these cats are really freaking smart and you can teach them tricks kind of like a dog. So Kona here knows how to <laughs> sit. She knows how to sprint. <laughs> she knows how to sit. She knows how to, she almost has shake a paw. Getting her to lie down is kind of a hard one, but she can do kisses. She can give Chelsea kisses before she gets a treat. Mm -hmm. We can get what her else? to sit and jump up wherever. Um, um, she also responds to her name. It's been about a month for the longest time. I didn't think it was going to happen, but she's finally starting to get it. When you call her, she'll actually come. Because these cats are so smart, it also really helps with training when it comes to things besides tricks. Things like getting them used to the vehicle, things like their carrier, taking them out on walks. And it also helps when it comes to things like putting them in new environments. They're smart, they can adapt quickly. Say hi again. Kona. No, no interest. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> so let's see if we can get Kona to do some tricks for you so you can see what we're talking about. Okay. We'll start you off with my favorite. You gonna do it? You gonna do it? Are you gonna give me kisses? That's my <laughs> girl. Okay, Kona. Ready? Kona, sit. And you stand up. Good girl. Can you go? Up. Sit. No, I said sit. I shouldn't have said sit. <laughs> I give her the treat. Can you kiss us one more time? Kisses! Good girl! <laughs> One thing that we didn't mention, as you probably just saw, Chelsea was using a clicker with her. So basically how you clicker train a kitty is every time she does a trick, click, treat, click, treat, click, treat. And then she starts to associate the sound of the clicking with something positive. So it's kind of like positive reinforcement. Um, when we first heard about it, I don't know about you, but I was kind of skeptical and I was like, well, wouldn't the treat just be the positive reinforcement? And if it was me, I'd be more motivated by the treat than the clicker, but it actually seemed to work pretty good. So we've been keeping up with it. And now if she hears the clicker from the other side of the hill, she'll come sprinting over because she knows that she's gonna get a treat. Okay, so there it is. That is everything that we wish we would have known before we got Kona. So if you guys are thinking about getting a bangle kitty, um, those are some helpful tips that should help you out. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and we'll be sure to get back to you. If you guys like this video and want to see more, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button so you can see more weekly videos. We're going to be posting more about Kona, I'm sure. Thanks guys, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Say bye Kona. Bye. <laughs>